go to the common room. Oh, there he is. We never went to the common room. That oh. was it. All right, all right. Hello. Oh, terrific. Daddy's boy let another bum in the door. Well, welcome to Library Day Roland. Don't steal any of my shit, okay? Looks like you can't read anyway, so I probably don't have much to worry about. We heard you were obnoxious. I'm not here to loot anything. I can see your pupils dilating, you filthy liar. <laughs> oh yeah, we've got seven full books on polygraph machines alone. Oh please, like those are even remotely admissible in court. I would insult his hat, but it's actually a very nice hat. I'm seriously, I'm just here out of curiosity. I'm not interested in looting anything. Oh, I can see your little gelatinous eyeballs darting around the room. I see you looking at all my stuff. <laughs> that plant, mine. That painting, mine. That jukebox, wanna guess? Yours or mine? Er, uh, time up, it's mine! <laughs> hmm. I don't have anything else to say about this. Maybe we could talk about how you're probably gonna starve to death. <laughs> Did you know that if you don't eat, the human body begins to consume its own muscle and tissue after a week or two? You'd probably eat your own shit after that point. <laughs> Pretty interesting read. Hmm. <laughs> Prim Slim, is that you? <laughs> Prim who now? Yeah, there's a robot outside. Looks kind of like you. He's a wreck with a cowboy hat and shoes. Oh, we all look the same to you. Is that it, you racist motherfucker? Yeah, I thought so. Well, we look more different than Asians, at least. Uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't say that. Is there a reason why you're the only one with a unique flair? Look, you just mind your own goddamn business and go back to inhaling all the oxygen and jerking off to whatever you filthy animals do, okay? <laughs> You're absolutely right about me. I'm here to scavenge. Now move, Toaster. I have a backpack to fill. <laughs> oh, all right. I see how it is. Well, here's your room key, sir. We have all-night room service, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and dog-sized cockroaches. Enjoy your stay. Fun. Really? <laughs> well, nice. That sounds fun. I like dog-sized cockroaches. I don't actually. I want them all to go away. I'm going to take that printing card. Oh, yeah, you do have boots. Sensitive electronics. Hey. Do you need a hand or something? You know, you're lucky I don't have six fingers, or I'd give you four middle fingers instead of just one. Uh, James told me you're the go-to guy if I want some, uh, special books. <laughs> oh, right. That's me, all right. The go-to guy for the special books right here. Good old Roland. So, do you got any issues with guns and bullets, or, uh... It's a goddamn library! You want you to look around, <laughs> asshole! You're very obnoxious. Well, it's not my fault. I had abusive parents and they, uh, used to hit me. I can see why. Okay, whatever. Goodbye, Roland. Come back soon. I don't think he wants me to come back soon. Yeah, that would have been sarcastic. Where's my room? So, this could be a nice little... More books. Room. Yeah, more. Where is that here? I... Whoa. Ah, communal bedding. Communal bedding and communal toilets! Yes. Uh, apparently that requires Darren's room key. And Robson's. I don't know who these people are. Here you go, there's your room. Someone left a bunch of ammunition casings in Why'd your room. Why did they leave a bunch of shell casings in here? Did they know I was gonna show up? Oh, printed card. Woo. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm gonna sit up to talk to you. Uh, okay. so, welcome. Welcome. I'm the Handyman Jumpsuit. This is not blood. I know it looks like it's blood, but it definitely isn't. Uh, how are you doing? I am feeling very awkward right now, talking to us. Yeah, sentient. well, me too. I'm stuck into a dresser. How do you think I feel? Don't think you feel anything, because you're a jumpsuit. Oh, I'm sentient. That doesn't mean that I can't feel racist. Doesn't mean you can, either. Okay, bye. See you later. Yep. Yep. James! James, 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 James. So, are you getting comfortable in the library? There's a skeleton upstairs. I was wondering, perhaps you could help me with something. Uh, he has questions first, James. Oh, well, no, he has questions for me, so I'm gonna let him ask me questions first. Okay. It's not like the guy's getting any deader. Some years ago, two people came here. The first one wore some kind of purple robes. The second had heavy armor. Huh? Military. From what I could gather, they were on some kind of scouting mission. The robed one, Dexter, really did extensive research. Consulted a great deal of books, but never told me what he was looking for exactly. 
As to whether they found something, I can't say. They stayed for three weeks and they were just gone. They left in such a hurry that I had no time to ask what they intended to do with their knowledge of this place. They did not even tell me if they learned something useful. Why don't you investigate it yourself? We, uh, lost both keys to their room. Ah. So maybe there's something in it. Maybe not. I have no way to be sure. Is it really that important for you to know what these strangers thought of the library? Yeah, it's a big deal. We had to deal with some rough situations in the past. We are trying to learn from our mistakes. Well, I'll look into it. What do I get out of this? There are some popular books we try to keep out of everyone's hands, mainly because their main appeal is military knowledge. We could print you copies if you wish. It's just going to be a copy of how to decontaminate an area after a nuclear incident, which is of no use to anyone. Certainly not us here on the uh, post-apocalypse. Also, I found a body in the study room. Is that your master's? Yes. He hasn't been answering for a century now. I may be overextending my judgment on this, but I think he's dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say so. Uh, how did he manage to die in that way? All that we know is that one day we found him in this position, under a pile of books. He hasn't moved ever since. As for now, we theorize that he tripped and tried to catch something to stop his fall. The bookshelf came down with him. The bookshelf is in a weird spot for that to have happened. You made a grave for robots outside, but you didn't bury your own master. Why? A grave for robots outside? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. We can't go out. The maintenance bot is able to, but only rarely, and only to conduct checks and repairs on the exterior. Hmm. Maybe those robots we saw on the way in died trying to get in? No, the maintenance bot put them out there, but I don't know why. Hmm. So you left your dead master there? Why not? He liked it there. Sounds like we got our work cut out for Lots us. Lots of work, Alright, let's go! Uh... B -b 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 Oops. Picking the lock to this room. Ooh. Ooh! The armory! Hey, Arthur. Beep boop. Tell me about Dexter. He was the kind of man who praised butterflies for being gorgeous, yet crushed caterpillars out of disgust. Tell me about the incident with the slavers. It has no information. Ah! Fine. We won't bang later, okay? Ah, uh, you're gonna keep her lips sealed. He doesn't have lips, he's a computer. He's gonna keep his speaker uh, desoldered. There was a note in the cafeteria. There it is. Found it. Audio log. I played the audio log. Aldrich here. It's about time I found something relevant to. <laughs> Roger, stop frightening me like that. What is it now? Wait, you smell like cigarettes. Did you actually smoke inside the library? Are you crazy? What do you think will happen to us if those monomaniacal contraptions notice one of us is smoking in a library? Oh, they'll probably kick us out, boss. Well, I don't know either. And I don't want to know. So get your f to a shower and get rid of that filthy smell before they catch you. If their maker gave them something as useless as a personality, I wouldn't be surprised if they're also equipped with some sort of sniffing module. <laughs> and even if they aren't, you really stink. So chop chop, shower. <laughs> it's really rude, boss, but okay. Uh, we gotta be very meticulous with our search. We gotta check every little mop bucket, every little chair. There's not a note. I can't believe this toaster has the nerve to deny us access to the living quarters on the sole ground that Roger lost both of our <laughs> keys. We tried to sleep in the movie theater, but Erickson has grown so disgustingly fat from his constant binge eating that he snores when he sleeps. <clears throat> Even after I kicked him onto the ground. So I left him there and tried to sleep on the couch in the lounge. But as soon as I fell asleep, that toaster, Roland, began to walk across the room, singing this stupid song praising his useless spurs, the dingle dangle or whatever the <laughs> So here I am, crawling under a desk in the classroom, trying to set a makeshift bed for me to cry myself to sleep. <laughs> Yet, I'm wide awake, and trying to calm the f*** down by recounting these events on a holotape. As you can hear, it works perfectly! <laughs> Clearly. He sounds very relaxed. Hey, I see a printed card. Nice. So, it sounds like they were sleeping in a couple different areas, well, that's why we found the one holotape in the classroom, because that's where he was trying to sleep. Hey, there's another one! 
One thing is for sure. We are leaving tomorrow. Our stay here has been utterly pointless, and Knight Roger hasn't been the most helpful auxiliary. I'm hula hooping right now. It is rather safe to say that his main preoccupations were playing the pool table and stuffing himself with pre-war food. Man, maybe that guy should have stopped doing that. Yeah, because you know what happens afterward. How long were they down here for that he ate so much that he became too corpulent to fit through a door? Well, it doesn't take a lot. You know, just one night of binge eating can put you down for the count. Roland. Oh, recipe books on cooking radioactive dirt? I'm sorry, but they're all out at the moment. Radioactive dirt sounds delicious! Hey, this room you gave me, did you use it as a dump? <gasps> a dump? That's our executive suite. <laughs> I'm oh, okay. sorry you're not pleased with the accommodations. I mean, like, who lived in there? Packs of rabid mole rats? Just as if, my good man, we put a lovely woman named Piper in there. Who's Piper? She's uh, one of our lovely guests that consumed almost all of the remaining food supplies and defecates in toilets that don't even flush anymore. Which I can all smell, by the way. <laughs> Oh, so they do have olfactory sensors. Toilet's clogged, the bed isn't done, and there's there's hair on the sheets. Oh, maid? Maid? This gentleman's toilet is clogged. Oh, that's right. She's dead. <laughs> you're... you're the little... I give up. I'm done with you. I'm shocked. Shocked! You of all people are a quitter. <laughs> I, brother, I've quit more things than you fucking started, all right? Tell me about this Piper fellow. Rather tall, one hand with three fingers, cool eye patch, dirty as hell, spoke loudly, snored louder, spilled blood all over the place. <laughs> it took a whole six months to get better. Scolded our master about some obscure shit and I couldn't care less about it and I finally went away. Spilled blood all over the place? You know, I read how the typical adult human body contains five to six liters of blood, but it doesn't really register until you see so much of it pulled out on the ground in front of you. <laughs> It what? took 4.7 hours for our maintenance boss to scrub it all away. What a mess. Luckily, Helena took that bloody disaster to the infirmary before it spread to the Persian rug. Jeez, she was here for six months? Yeah, well, she was all messed up. Your organics take forever to kind of heal back to some kind of semblance of a working order. Even then, you're never 100% again. I'm glad I'm not one of you. Anyways, why don't you go ask Helena? She'll elaborate more on this. Jeez. You got a problem with me? It's nothing personal. You're just ugly, that's all. And I can smell oh. your sphincter. <laughs> How dare you? I wash my butthole every day. Come back soon. I will do my best not to. And this is our room, yep. Yep, this is my room. That's just an absolute mess. Be glad that we're not broadcasting this in smell-o-vision, you guys. Mm. Hey, my previous occupant took all these books into the bathroom, and you're not allowed to do that. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna tell on him. And someone took this book to the bathroom as well. And that magazine. There's the cigarettes that he was smoking. Uh, ah! Nice. How could he? He got a sharp eagle eye. Hey, movie theater. All right, let's see. Uh, bunch of pillows piled up. Lots of pillows, cause this dude was just in here eating up a storm uh, yeah, and watching movies. Everywhere. He was just, it, and then he was sleeping here, probably. Uh, all right. Yeah. There's an egg timer, which those are usually only go for an hour. So why the hell was he using an egg timer to wake himself <laughs> up? <laughs> just waking up like every hour. That sounds awful. Uh, he was intermittent fasting. Five minutes over. Time to resume eating. Helena. Forgive me if I'm being too inquisitive, but the scar on your forehead, it is recent, isn't it? What scar? No, that's from when I was a baby and the Dark Lord tried to kill me. He killed my parents <laughs> and then the spell bounced off of my head because my mom loved me so much. I have the obligation to inform you that you may risk complications. An examination may preserve you from severely unpleasant after effects. Do you want to look at the wound on his forehead? I Fine, go ahead. Excellent! <laughs> Under which circumstances were you wounded? It all began when I was asked to deliver a platinum chip to New Vegas. We're not doing a flashback of all this. That's quite a story, I must say. And quite a miracle you didn't die. Let's have your head scanned now. 
Please sit comfortably while I prepare the procedure. And then she started boring. Oh, you're awake. Hey, you, you're finally awake. For now, the results are rather encouraging. It doesn't seem that you sustained major damage, though I fear there may be some complications. What are those complications? People suffering from brain trauma often encounter a wide range of personality and coordination disorders, as well as language impairment issues, social disinhibitions, and in some cases, extraordinary risk-taking, as well as a dangerous tendency to transgress rules. Did you observe any of those symptoms? Oh yeah, I totally can't stay focused. Also, his ethics tend to fluctuate. Sometimes he's helping the people, sometimes he's poisoning free side, you know. Two sides of the same coin, really. I hear you. Um, also I pick up everything I see. Okay. Rampant kleptomaniac. So is it serious? Some of those symptoms are likely to persist. Until you get used to them, or until they disappear completely. When you told me what happened to you, there was one thing that bothered me. Your decision to go after the people who ambushed you. Did you ask yourself why you began chasing the person that nearly killed you? Especially considering how close he was to succeeding. Hmm. You think my frontal lobe is damaged and I can't make proper decisions? Exactly. If you understand why I am worried, it may save us some time. Okay, so let's say I am a little confused, or not quite healed fully. What do you think I should do? During your stay here, and as long as you allow it, I will regularly monitor your cerebral activity. On your side, I might ask you to read some books, which may help you put your motivations into perspective. Reading in a library? How odd. That's stupid! Also, you're gonna give me an MRI? I got buddy chicken here. The first book I want you to read is The Count of Ponte Risco. Please come back when you're done with it. You mean the Count I lent of it to Cristo. Roland a while ago. He should know where it is. The, that sounded like the porn title of a parody of the Cat of Monte Cristo. Um, I got questions about previous guests. I will help you as much as I can, as long as you don't ask me to breach medical confidentiality. What was the deal with Piper? Piper had seen many things and lived a whole lot of experiences outside. Survived the Holocaust, too. The nuclear holocaust? Is there a reason why Roland gave me Piper's old room? I don't know. He never let anyone in Piper's room before you. The only parallel I can draw between the two of you is a notable head wound and a tendency for vengeance. Mm. Or maybe he doesn't like either of you. Was Piper planning some kind of revenge? I can't tell you more about it. The rest falls under patient therapist confidentiality. Oh, for God's sake, that's not medical confidentiality. You're just being obtuse. What kind of head wound? Piper had an eye patch. A bullet wound, most likely. You'll tell me about that, but you won't tell me about what she wanted to revenge for, huh? Roland may have drawn a parallel between the two of you. Why did your master program Roland to be that obnoxious? Was he some kind of masochist? Yeah, was he Mike? A little bit, yes. Our master needed to stay focused. Even if we each provided a form of stimulation, we were more or less yes-men to him. He needed something to push him out of his boundaries from time to time. So to keep his fighting spirit alive, he programmed Roland. And as for why he allowed Roland to be offensive to our guests, I suppose he thought that it was critical for our guests to have at least a modicum of patience or self-derision. They need a little bit more of a modicum of patience to deal with him. That said, I remember two people that managed to avert his vigorous badgering. Great, who were they? As time went by, our master seemed more and more amused by Roland's provocations. In the end, every time Roland tried to taunt our master, he shrugged it off with a laugh. As for the other one, it was our first guest, Piper. Piper was the first guest, yeah, all right. What's the stupid hat and cowboy boots? It's a rather amusing story, to be honest. Seeing how we resemble each other physically, the only way our master could differentiate us at the time was our voice modules. Then one fine day, Roland discovered he could mimic both my and James's voices. He'd then pass up as one of us and act as if he was malfunctioning. Oh. For a time, our master bought it and went to great troubles trying to repair us. 
until he realized that Rollo was mocking him all along. <laughs> so he put a cowboy hat and star on him so he could never fool him again. <laughs> and star? Later, he decided to paint us all and give us some visual identity. Mm. We saw the boots. Did we see the star? Mm. Wait, the star was on hmm. the dead body. That's enough about Roland. We've dignified him with enough chatter already. Tell me about Arthur. He is probably the one of us I can least relate to. He doesn't like to converse with us, and spends all his time compiling and organizing the data our master left him. Yeah, he speaks entirely in metaphor and parable. It's annoying. Our master told us there was a reason why he programmed Arthur this way, but never bothered to tell us. If he's supposed to manage your databases, why did he bother giving him a personality? Arthur, as far as his personality mind frame is concerned, is a total mystery to us. We don't even know why our master gave him one. Is, that, is being a talking database all that he's about? Yes. His memory should contain every book in the library by now. If anything should happen to them, Arthur would be able to print replacements. He is also in charge of monitoring our maintenance bots and dealing with the vault's technical functions. Uh, also, tell me about uh, Dexter Aldridge. I can't say I had much contact with him. If I'm not mistaken, he left some of his notes in the classroom. Yeah, we found that one already. Also, tell me about Roger Erickson. He was an agreeable man. I remember having nice conversations with him about varieties of subjects. He was very curious about us. He was nice enough to treat me like a person, and sometimes like a lady. On a more general observation, he seemed to want to make the best of his time here. Uh, we'll talk later. Anytime. I gotta go find a book. The Count of Ponte Risco. Alright. Roland, oh, Roland has it. Great. <laughs> also, I don't know where the hell I'm gonna find the keys to the rooms. What's in that suitcase? A nail gun? Oh, it's just a nail gun! I'm gonna take this nail gun and I'm gonna shoot Ro Roland with it. Oh, no. Think fast, chuckle nuts! Nothing personal! I ran out of ammo for it. Don't worry. I don't think Roland's gonna be talking anymore. What is it now, Roland? Uh-oh. <laughs> That's how they communicate with each other. Um, Can they not move from those specific spots? I guess not, no. Dealing with the loss of a loved one. An what, introduction for, to taxidermy. For instance, the robot next to you. Beyond the pleasure principle, Sigmund Freud. Shame. I have no voice module and I must process my dread. <laughs> that was the not so successful sequel to, uh, I mean, <laughs> no, yeah. you, know, you know, you know. Yeah, I know. Uh, or that breaks the game. Well, that's the end of the quest, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you had fun watching it. Um, unfortunately, this mod isn't finished. So that's about as far as you can get. What a shame. I don't know why anyone likes this mod that much. You say that about all the mods. It's really short, and it's like it doesn't actually end on a satisfying thing. You show up, you kill Roland, and then that's the end of the mod. <laughs> okay. I think these books in the Blue Spine have something on them. 36 Lessons of Vivek. Oh, okay. So it's another collectible. Just gonna find all the books of Blue Spines. All right. It's too many collectibles. I'm not playing a Nintendo 64 game. I don't want collectibles. Well, you should. They're great. I'm not saying that I don't ever. I'm just saying I'm not playing one right now. All right. And if I wanted to, if I wanted a bunch of collectibles, I would go play Glover. The best platformer ever. <laughs>